Welcome to another demo video by Jitterbit. In this demo, we will cover the configuration that uh, can be done with Jitterbit to automate the process of integrating BigCommerce with Salesforce and SAP. We will first sync some product from SAP into our BigCommerce store to make sure they are available for our visitors uh, that uh, come to our store. Once the product is available, I will put on my buyer hat on and uh, register as a customer uh, for, for the store. This will immediately create customers in Salesforce uh, for our CRM users and in SAP for our ERP users. And that will be in real time with no manual and human intervention. We will uh, next create an order for the customer that uh, was just created in BigCommerce. Uh, this will trigger an automated process to create an opportunity in Salesforce with the appropriate item or items sold. As part of the process, we will create a sales order in SAP. The creation in, of sales order in SAP also triggers an automated process to create an order in Salesforce. To ensure that we have visibi visibility into our ERP, in this case SAP, we will also update BigCommerce with transaction IDs from SAP. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. As mentioned earlier, we're gonna start our process by syncing products from SAP to BigCommerce. So we start with our designer that we've created a three-step process that queries SAP from, uh, through BAPIs, gets the information about the material. Uh, we get the pricing by calling a separate BAPI. And then once we have it, we're gonna go ahead and send it to BigCommerce. So just to come to our BigCommerce back end, we do a quick refresh of the product. Uh, you see we have about a few of these items. Uh, we expect once we sync the product from SAP that we have those additional five or six products show up on our BigCommerce instance. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and man uh, kick this off manually this process could definitely be uh, done automatically on a schedule or in real time as new products are created in SAP. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. And behind the scene, uh, Jitterbit is calling the appropriate APIs from SAP to get the information from SAP and into BigCommerce. And as you can see, we completed with success. So if we go our, to our e-commerce backend. Let's go to refresh our screen. We see that we have five additional products with uh, material IDs from SAP. So now that we have our items, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my buyer hat on. I'm gonna go to our store and create an account. And let's go ahead and create my account. So behind the scene, we are using BigCommerce's webhooks to initiate an API call to Jitterbit to automate the process of creating a customer in Salesforce. First, let's go back to our backend. Let's go to our customers, make sure that customer is here. As you can see, this customer is, is in fact here. And let's go to our accounts in Salesforce and go ahead and refresh. As you can see, this information is here. We already have our SAP ID. So if we could, we could drill into it, you'll see that the SAP ID is here. Obviously this user hasn't purchased anything, but that's it's gonna be the next step. So let's go ahead and now navigate back to our um, e-commerce. The other thing I wanted to show is that we get this information from SAP. Let's go to refresh this one more time. Uh, we keep just, we, we currently, we could certainly create a custom field, but for uh, our SAP ID, we have this in a note section. So if I go ahead and copy this and actually go to our SAP instance and look for a customer. Just go ahead and paste it. 
as you can see, that information was also, also propagated into SAP. So all the systems have this customer now automatically. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and actually place an order for this customer. Uh, we're going to do this in BigCommerce. This could very well could have been done online. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at and create a new order in BigCommerce with this customer. Go to search for our customer. Uh, provide the address. Here is we're going to go ahead and pick our one of our SAP products that we we had we had synced earlier. Let's pick one of these. As you can see, uh, I can update the quantity here. Let's just keep one given it's a forty thousand dollar item. Click next. Billing. Provide my billing information. And since this is a demo, we're just going to do a manual payment. And we're going to go ahead and submit. Again, we have another webhook with BigCommerce that will initiate the process of creating an opportunity uh, for my account. So as you notice right now, I had no opportunity. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and refresh our page. As you can see behind the scene, uh, a, an opportunity was created for us. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and navigate to that opportunity. Notice we still don't have a Salesforce, uh, I'm sorry, SAP sales order quite yet. So we're going to go ahead and refresh one more time. As you can see, now we have our SAP ID as well. So as you can see, we have our products and that should do it. So let's go back to SAP. Actually, before I go back to SAP, let's go back to here and refresh our screen. I just wanted to show that we are able to also get the sales order and we happen just again to put it in a note. Uh, so we're gonna copy that and come back to SAP. Let's go back to our main menu and look at sales orders now. I'm gonna look at the one we just created just to make sure it's here. And here it is again with the appropriate customer name, appropriate material. And if we scroll down here, we'll see our amount. So now let's go ahead and see how this project was created. We'll go back to a Cloud Studio. Again, this is where you design your integration. On the left side, we have our workflows. This happened to be under products. On the right side, we have our BigCommerce connector, Salesforce connector, and SAP connector that was showcased in this demo. We also have many out-of-the-box connectors that are available. Uh, there are also some connectors here that are created by personally by myself, where we, I've used Jitterbit Connector Builder to create a connector to a system that exposes RESTful APIs. Some of those are APIs that are exposed by USPS for address val uh, verification, Bamboo HR um, connector to a blockchain app, uh, as well as some of the other ones. Uh, some of the other enterprise uh, connectors are NetSuite, uh, QuickBooks, uh, we service now, and as you can see, Workday. In the middle of the section uh, of, of Designer, we have where you design your integrations. Uh, we looked at uh, product synchronization earlier. Uh, now let's look at the entire project that enables us to automate the process of customer and sales order creation in both Salesforce, BigCommerce, and SAP. As you can see, we have our design flows. This is where we accept our webhooks, uh, both for order creation as well, as well as customer creation. We have activities that involve querying BigCommerce orders as well as big, uh, querying customers in BigCommerce. Uh, we have our Salesforce uh, connector that we use to create customers in Salesforce as well as creating opportunities in Salesforce. So as you can see, a lot of these operations are chained together to automate the process of creating new customers and cre creating new sales orders in uh, both Salesforce and SAP. 
with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this session and we'll see you next time.